him and preach. He probably helped him with that. Well, you got to understand that when you look at Christ dying, and even when you look at when we're getting dipped in that water, you got to understand that we're not just taking a bath, that it actually means something. What it means is that, guess what? Now, this old man, this dead life, will no longer exist. It's saying that I'm going in, and guess what? I'm dying to something. Ooh, Jesus. Well, wait a minute. Preach, you got to help me out clear this up. See, Jesus just didn't die just to die. He died because of sin. And until we realize that, guess what? We'll never live spirit-filled, godly lives. Because we won't understand that Christ just didn't die on the cross. That he died for our sins. For that old man. Yeah, the one who would rather fight with this than on their knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Die for that old man. That old man that go out there and cut up and act the fool as opposed to reasoning together. Die for that, that old man. Because how many of you know, and I, I know I, I'm not preaching, I'm not, I'm not preaching to folk that don't understand. How many of you know that old man is buried somewhere, but if you don't realize and remember that, guess what? He can rise up at any time. But how many of you know Christ died to take care of that old man? Wow, wow, wow. Well, look what it says. That life as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Now watch this now. Just like Christ got up, watch it now. It says, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Jesus. See, most folk get caught up <laughs> in the mere fact that they have a one-way ticket to hell. But they live like hell while they're on earth. Ooh, Jesus. I knew they were going to be quiet, Lord. You, I know you're you with me. You can't be so heavenly-minded and heavenly-bound that you can't live a good earthly life. Look what it says. It says this. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Jesus. What that means is this. That means Christ rising from the grave. You better understand and know that represents your new life in Christ. Yes, I know, you theologians, yes, we're going to have a glorified body. My spirit will come back to my body, and when the trumpet sounds, I'm going to be with the Lord. Yeah, that's fine, but I'm here to tell you that guess what? Christ wants you to live right while you're down here. And he wants us to walk in the newness of life. Well, what does that mean, preacher? That means something about you ought to be different. Let the church say different. Yeah. Well, preacher, where are you going with this? How many of you know that any time Christ lays his hands on somebody and somebody comes in contact with Christ, they never leave the same way they came? Why does it seem like we got Christians and people of God all over the world and people still live in the same way they used to do before they said they were walking with the, with the Lord. It says that we ought to walk in the what? Newness of life. That means that our walk, our talk, the what we do, ought to represent what Christ has done. It is a new life in Christ. Well, preacher, you want to help me with that? Oh, yes. Well, does that mean that I'm better than anybody else? No. You walk around like that, you a fool. Because it ain't nothing but by the grace of God that you can actually walk in that newness of life. But what it does say is this. 
that means that I got a new set of walking orders. And that I got a new set of rules that I live by. And I got a new standard that I'm what, operating according to. I'm not operating under my own what, understanding. I'm operating according to what Christ has done for me. And operating according to what the Holy Spirit. Let me help you out. If you want to walk in the newness of life, you better tap into the Holy Spirit. Because I'm here to tell you, you better ask Him to fill you up to the brim. Because I'm here to tell you, this flesh ain't no joke. This flesh will cause you to do some stuff and think some stuff that is crazy and out of this world. But when we operate under the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will guide you, Lord have mercy, into all righteousness. And then we can accomplish what? The newness of life. So I don't want you to leave here thinking that that newness of life is going to be accomplished in your own power and in your own might. If you want to do something spiritual, if you want to do something godly, you're going to have to have God guide you and direct you to do what you're doing. It ain't according to what, oh well, I have the willpower to do it. Yeah, keep on with your willpower. Keep on over. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to just, I'm going to just take it. I'm just going to speak it into existence. Keep on with that mess. You better rely on the power of God and quit relying on what it is that you're talking and what you're saying. You got folk walking around, oh yes, I don't claim it. I'm speaking this and I'm speaking that and I'm speaking this. Where in the world do you leave room for the power of God? If I can call it out and call those things that be not as though they were, why need God? In order to walk in the newness of life, I need God to fill me up and work in me. Let me, let me, let me, let me help you preach it. Where are you going with it? Because I'm here to tell you that guess what? We got a lot of doctrine out there that ain't from God. See, you got to understand when the Bible talks about he called those things that be not as though they were, it wasn't Abraham that called those things that be not as though they were. It was God that called those things that be not as though they were. The Bible says by his word he created the heavens and the earth. Okay, alright, let me, let, me, let me share this with you. Alright, if we could just speak those things that be not as though they were, we wouldn't need God and guess what, we can move that old crazy boss man out of the way and wouldn't even need to do nothing else. If we can call those things that be not as though they were, then guess what? If you walked here today, you'd be able to speak and get, guess what? That car will arrive in the driveway. All right. All right. Watch me now. you got to understand that in order to walk in the newness of life, in order to get the benefits from God, you've got to operate according to His power and His might. Because the power is not in us. Now, let me help you out. Preach to you. Go See, you hear people say, how I'm there. How would I am there? I don't want to talk. You know what that means? That means you can talk folk up. Or you can talk folk down. That means you can say something to help the situation. Or you can say something to hurt the situation. The power ain't in you. You got to understand, the power is in God. So you got to understand that guess what? That when we look at that newness of life, you better rely on what God has to offer in order to obtain that. Because that newness of life is not just something you can get from reading a book. That newness of life can't get, be obtained just by doing all the right things. It has to be obtained by saying, guess what? This evening, the Heavenly Father, if I ever needed you, Lord, I sure do need you right now. That's where the newness of life is achieved from. Not at all that you've done, but in seeking the one that holds it in his hands. Oh, yes. Lord Jesus, help me know. Verse 5, it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. What would you mean, preacher? Well, see, Christ was sacrificed. We are a body of believers. We are 
have been planted together, and we all come together because of what Christ has done on, his, on, on our behalf. And we've been planted together in the likeness of his death. Well, wait a minute. What do we mean, the likeness? That means that the likeness is that you have to die just like Christ died. Well, preacher, you about to help me with that dying. Because uh, I'm going to die and live at the same time. I'm so glad you asked me. <laughs> Romans 12, 1 says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, watch it now, a living sacrifice. Ooh, Jesus. So you mean that I got to, I got to sacrifice, I got to die to something in order to live? Yeah. Because why? How many of you know that self, every now and again self, will get you in trouble? Every now and again flesh will get you in trouble. Every now and again, what you think, what your opinion is, and what your preference is, will get you in trouble. That's why we got to die to our own selfish desires. How many of you know that in most cases, your fleshly desires don't match up to what God wants? Because what we want in most cases, God has nothing to do with. How many of you know that when you look at this flesh, you can feed this flesh all day long and it will never be satisfied? You can get this, you can buy this, you can have this, you can have stuff in front of you, but at the same time, it will never, ever, 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 ever be satisfied. Hmm. Lord have mercy. Preacher, what are you going with this? Y'all know I like, to, I like to use illustrations dealing with children. Because how many of you know that, guess what? We all children at the same time. We talk about them babies all the time, but we just grown up children. Watch me now. Watch me. It's kind of like a child begging mom for a new toy or a new something that they really like. They might have saw a commercial or they might have went to the store and they got something. And here it is. Not long after that, while they got that in their hand, no, no, I, I say they put it down. They still got it in their hand, and they begging and crying because mama won't buy them something else. This flesh is never satisfied. That's why we got to die to what? To self. Well, Pastor, how do I do that? Seek the will of God. Well, how do I do that? Read his word. Know what it says. Know what he wants for you to do. And not just that. Ask him his will for your life. Most people, when they pray, Lord, I need you to do this, X, Y, Z, that, and the other. And Lord, you remember that stuff I asked you about last week? I want to ask you about that again right now, Lord. And then even some more stuff, Lord, and I want some more stuff, this, that, and the other. And your whole prayer is asking God for stuff. When was the last time you said, Lord, use me however you want to today? Think about that. That sacrifice. That saying, Lord, if you tell me to do something that really and truthfully, it wasn't on my agenda, but at the same time, I know you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. That sacrifice. That's dying. See, you got to die to self in order to see the glory of the Lord. And most people never see the glory of the Lord because they're always worrying about what it is they either don't have, Lord have mercy, or what it is they have that they don't appreciate. Oh, I just need a new this. And I just need a new that. You better appreciate the little bit of stuff God has given you already. Because they got some folk, they wish they had one fourth of the stuff you have. And we'll complain and mope and cry about all kinds of stuff. God has been so good, we can't serve God because we serve in our boss because we're trying to work extra overtime to try to get the stuff we know really and truly we don't even need. Oh, I'm touching nerve. I know that's why you're quiet. 
you are a purchased position. You are no longer your own. So when you wake up in the morning, you ought to be trying to see what you can do to serve the Lord. But you know what we do? We make our agenda based on oh, what I'm going to do this and what I'm going to do that and how I'm going to do this and how I'm going to do the other. But at the same time, God is saying, guess what? I want to use you to do my will. We won't sacrifice no time. We won't give him nothing. We'll give him a little bit and say, that's enough. Lord, huh, at least I went and uh, Joe Blow over there, he don't even go to church. <laughs> at least I passed by the church. Some folk ain't been to the church in 50 years. Well, get what? Ain't about anybody else. It's about what God has for you. And when we look at dying and being planted together in his death, we all ought to walk as a living sacrifice. Not about, Lord, what I want. But Lord, it's about what you want. But look what it said. And we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Our lives ought to be resurrected lives that look alive. That looks as if God has placed his hand on us. That looks as if we've repented. That looks as if we're walking in the will of God. Let me share this with us. When our lives look no different than those in the world, you really minimize the power of God. When our lives look no different than those in the world, we minimize the power of God. Because you know what it says? It says that God had not done nothing for me. God had made no up, no change in me. And what ends up happening, I shared with the class this week, last week, that really truthfully, as Christians, you know what we become? We become nothing more than chameleons. What do you mean, preacher? What a chameleon does, a chameleon changes with its environment. You get around some folk, and you're cussing and fussing and doing all kinds of stuff. I ever, whatever. The pastor walking, hello, pastor, hello, Rev, how are you doing? We're chameleon Christian, and we don't look no different than the world. And then we get around some girl, let me tell you. Man, brother, check this out. And it ain't nothing of God don't look no different, and the world is looking at it, yeah. And the background, you know what they're saying? They're saying, yeah, hey, I'm laughing with him, but he's just showing me that, get what, that old church he's going to, that old Bible he said he's reading, get what, they ain't doing no good. But we have to understand that we have to walk in the likeness of his resurrection. Well, verse 6, look what it says. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified, Lord have mercy, with him. Wait a minute, preach. You got to help me. Our old man is crucified with him. Our old man is crucified with him. We have to understand that when Christ died, it meant that, guess what? That we ought to still die to sin. We ought to die to those selfish desires. But pastor, that's hard. Pastor, I still struggle with it. That's good, because if you're struggling, that's good. If you ain't struggling, that means the Holy Spirit don't have no power over you. Folk that don't struggle with sin, guess what? I'm getting as far away from them as I can get. Because, let me tell you what happens is, folk who don't struggle with sin can do anything and it don't bother. But if you're struggling with it, you know what that lets me know? That your flesh and your spirit are at war. Are at war. And guess what? If you didn't know it, I'm going to share this with you. And I pray you get this. If you don't get nothing else, get this. You better know that you are in a fight. And you better know that you are in a war. That's why we got to stay away from some stuff. Leave some stuff where it is. Leave some folk where they are. Leave some surroundings where they are. So that, guess what? We can feed the right thing. If we don't feed our spirit, let me tell you, the flesh will win. And it's going to do whatever it wants to do. Yeah. I'm about to touch a nerve. I'm about to touch a nerve. But I, I 
catch itself.
Because if you bring some, uh, some plastic in there, or you bring some money in there, I'm going to tell you, they're going to make you spend it. And now, you're not just window shopping. Now you're swiping. Swipe or no swiping. <laughs> now, you're, now you're swiping. The little kids know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Now you're swiping. And you're swiping, and you know that you ain't supposed to be swiping. Old man flesh. Why? Because it's what I wanted at the given time. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Oh, that works in. That's that old man. That's that flesh. And that's how you know when you're not operating under the power of God because you know what you're driven by? You're not driven by God's word. You're not driven by what the Holy Spirit has to offer. You are driven by what you want, how you want it, and when you want it. Jesus, Lord, it's so quiet in here. I can see I can hear the grasshoppers hopping on the roof. <laughs> but that represents that old man. Why? Because that flesh and that old man is never ever satisfied. Never. And it wants what it wants when it wants it. That's why Paul says he has to keep his flesh under what? Subjection. And he has to what? Discipline himself. Let the church say discipline. Lord have mercy. Because that old man can rise up at any time. Well, I got one more for you. You got one more? Yep, I got one more for you. Somebody tell you something, you ain't got no business telling you. <laughs> and you know <clears throat> that you can kind of, you know, solve the problem without, you know, going to blows. But you stand up, you say, hey, yeah, okay, we're going to see about that. Then they say something, then you say something. They say something, then you say something. Now, you ain't think about what you're saying. Whatever comes to your mind, boom. You're saying it. Next thing you know, Pastor gone visit you in the parish jail. <laughs> All because your flesh is in control. Why? Because what I want at that present time is what I want it, and what I want to say is what I want to say, and get what I want to say. Look what it says. That our body of sin might be destroyed. Destroyed. That henceforth, watch me now, we should not serve sin. Wait, Pastor, you mean to tell me I could serve sin? Yeah. See, the Bible says this, and I, I, I want to put it, I want to put it to where you understand it, because it's a concept. The Bible says, no man can serve two masters. He going to hate one and love the other. Those who are servants to sin are going to sin. Those who are servants to God are going to seek to please God and do the will of God. Wait a minute, preacher, I'm saved. You mean to tell me I can serve sin while I'm saved? Yeah. Because you're operating now the what? The power and the unction of the Holy Spirit. But now you're operating on the power and the unction of what you want. Self. Well, preach it. What that got to do with dying in order to live? Well, you got to understand this one thing. If we never understand that we are in a fight, and if we never understand that we're in a struggle, we'll never understand that we can't treat our Christian walk like it's a walk in the park. We can't just skip reading the Bible. We can't just not pray unto God. We can't just not fellowship one with the other because our walk matters and in order for us to walk in the newness of life, we have to make sure we're seeking God in all the right ways. But how many of you know it's kind of like this? There are some children that I know that they'll do anything and it doesn't, everybody doesn't fall under this category. But 
some do. Some children will go to a class for a whole year. And they won't study. They won't read the lesson. They won't pay attention in class. They won't do nothing at all to try to gain the information that they need to gain through the whole entire year. They sleep in class. They disrespectful to the teacher. They don't do now nothing to do the right thing. Everything they do is a ploy to do the wrong thing. And at the end of the year, have nerve enough <laughs> to say that old teacher failed. <laughs> <laughs> That's something like that that happened to you before. <laughs> Keeping that to myself. But as Christians, we can't wonder why our first inclination is to sin. And we know we ain't been giving God our whole heart. Because at the end of the day, I'm here to tell you, if you truly see God, and I'm saying truly see God for wisdom, for guidance, for understanding, and for his will, he will share it with you. I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm telling you what I know. But it's an intentional effort to seek God. But preacher, what you mean? I'm supposed to be reading my Bible all day long? Some of y'all can't handle one chapter. You better stick with one scripture and let that man marinate on your mind. And let that one scripture minister to you for the whole day. And meditate on his word. Die to what you want. Yeah, I know you want to pick up the remote. Take out 10 minutes of your time and pray. Yeah, I know you want to go here and you want to go there and you want to do it. Take out 15 minutes of your time to talk with the Lord. I know you had all kinds of stuff to do for the day and you got to do this and you got to do that. Let me give you a hint. Just give him five minutes before you start your day and watch what he does. See, your newness of life is wrapped up and tied up in seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and believing with your whole heart that everything you need will be added unto you. So we must die to self in order to live for God. And when we take the Lord's Supper on today, I want you to understand this one thing. We're not just drinking juice and eating crackers. Mean something. We don't treat it like nothing. It's a big deal. Now, it's, it's what well, I'm going to say here. If you are a believer, it's a big deal. Because when I eat that cracker, that shows me that guess what? He was broke up for me. Not because of what he did. Because of what I did. They broke him up. They beat him up. They bruised him. But not only that. They didn't just bruise him up. They killed him. And not only that, there was some bloodshed. And the Bible says, that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. Christ had to not just die, but he had to bleed and die. Why? Because he is the sacrifice that you need in order to be saved from your sins. Wait a minute, preacher. Well, how many of you know that there's a whole song that says that that's not how the story ends. But that three days later, Jesus had mercy. He rose again. And how many of you know that in him rising again, that it ought to represent a brand new life on your behalf? That when you look at life and you look at what you do, guess what things Guess what? I ought to be a little bit clearer now that guess what? The sin is gone. You better understand and know that Christ just didn't die for your sins, but that he got up the third day with all power in heaven and in earth. And how many of you know that your life, while you're here on 
praise right now. Because he is worthy. Walk in the newness of life. Walk according to his power. Walk according to his Holy Spirit. Because I'm here to tell you that guess what? The reason why many people live purposeless lives and live lives that bear no fruit is because they're trying to operate under their own strength. And you have some people who accomplish things and think they got it, Lord have mercy, on their own. But when God pulled the rug from under them, he lets them know and lets them realize that it wasn't that you was all that smart. It's not because you was all that great, but it's because of my grace and my mercy. So all I'm asking you, people of God, is go ahead on and die so that you can live. God bless you. And may God.